It's nice to speak with you today, William. I'm looking forward uh, today to hearing your views on um, regulations and the effects on small business. Can you first provide a brief background of yourself? Sure, Dustin. Now, first of all, it's a pleasure to be with you. and been looking forward to this, and you and I have, have uh, looked forward to connecting and getting this, uh, this interview done. So in the, in the area of, of uh, regulations, uh, I think the, the part of our background that makes it very appropriate is that for the last nine years, we have focused exclusively on the small business community. We're, we're a small business veteran advocacy, so we deal with all of the things that, that can affect the small business. And, and we know the stats, they're really bad. Um, on the percentage of small businesses that go out of business in less than five years. And that ranges depending on, how, I guess, how optimistic you are about it. But the number we actually quote is about 95% of all small businesses don't make it past five years. And, and one of the things that, that, that help, um, helps to take them down is their lack of ability in being able to comply with regulations. So we've seen that firsthand, and I believe uh, this should be an insightful um, interview for your guests. And can you talk about the regu regulations, good and the not so good for small businesses? So I, I would put regulations into two categories. I would put those with uh, really good intentions uh, and that don't work, and ones with really bad intentions that are really designed for other purposes. And and the regulations, uh, most of them by their very nature, are designed to protect uh, a, a either an organization or or the employees or the beneficiaries of some kind of uh, product, good, or service. So. I would say that it, regulations by their very nature are designed to be good. And sometimes though what happens is, is in the enforcement of a regulation or the lack of clarity in how to understand a specific regulation can, can be very detrimental to a small business particularly. Larger businesses can, can, can comply. They also have the resources to, to, to fight it, you know, to, to actually say this is not good for business or this is not even good for the environment or this is not even good for the employees. And, and they have the, the wherewithal to fight it, whereas a small business doesn't. So a small business has no choice other than to learn compliance. And uh, we're going to talk about that probably in the next segment, but that is the only way that a small business can actually survive. And then there become so many regulations sometimes that they can be overwhelming for the small business. So I think from this perspective right away, I would, I would learn the industry that you're in business in, learn the kind of regulations that are going to affect your business. And then, and then ask, actually do like you would with a contract. Can we actually win this contract or, or is this going to take more time, effort, energy, and money than we could spend to win it? So I think you need to have those, that same kind of conversation for your particular business as to whether the regulations are going to be, overwhelm you, particularly if you're a small business. So one, one final thought on that. Uh, when, when you, when you actually look at those, look at the ones that can have a positive impact on your business. So like I would go so far as to say, most OSHA requirements, for example, are actually good for our companies. As long as we protect our employees and we, we teach them safety and we focus on safety, our employees are going to be safer and we're going to be, and we're going to be protected from, from the Department of Labor or, or any other agency that's being, um, implementing the OSHA requirements. Same thing with workers' comp or whatever it might be. So when we're in compliance, then that actually is good for business because then we get, so for example, in construction, we'll get a safety rating and our EMR rating goes up the safer we are on jobs, meaning that more uh, agencies, more uh, government, uh, con, um, pardon me, not government contracts, but uh, government contracting agencies will want to do business with us because we have a good safety rating. So that's, that's kind of how I would put an overall perspective on regulations. We just have to be aware of the regulations that affect our business before we decide how deeply we're going to go into that business. So how can business owners um, effectively implement uh, these regulations? 
Yeah, so that's another good question. Thank you. So one of the things that that is uh, just segueing completely on our last statement of how a business can successfully uh, become successful by executing the, the the specific regulations is number one, and this is probably most important of all, is is as I said earlier, being aware of what they are, knowing the type of agency and the type of regulation that's going to affect your business. So if you're in, let's say, you're in trucking, you know that you're going to have Department of Transportation, you're going to have uh, Department of Motor Vehicles in your state, you're going to have the Environmental Protection Agency, and you're going to have the California or the Highway Patrols in your state that are going to be affecting your business. So you have to be aware of the types of of regulations that will come down. And if you are, then you you build your business model to be uh, compliant with those and inherently within your business model from the very outset of the development of your business model, those regulations are being complied with and you have somebody hopefully on your team or in your company that focuses on being uh, a compliance officer. And, and I think that's probably the second major thing, having a compliance officer. I'll give you another example. With the United States Army Corps, when they issue a contract, uh, a construction contract, they require three individual um, compliance people to be on the job site. One is a, a simply a safety officer. The second one is, an, is a compliance officer. And then the third one is somebody who is actually interfacing with all of them and making sure that the contract is being executed according to the terms of the Army Corps. So if you're aware of that, when you compete for that job, they know you have to pay those people so you can build that into your bid and, and you'll be in compliance with the United States Army Corps. So there's an example of being ready, prepared, and then having the necessary personnel who are experts in that. And I'd say the third and final thing then is that if the regulation becomes overwhelming or over overbearing, you actually have a couple of options. And one of them would be to evaluate whether the specific uh, type of job that's being regulated is a job that's really worth pursuing. Sometimes you can avoid a regulation by not pursuing a specific type of job and or you could actually relocate for the sake of that job if that if the if the uh, opportunity was was val a value oriented one that was significant enough to require or warrant to move i.e. opening another uh, office where you execute a specific job out of that office and then therefore that job is is the one that's being regulated as opposed to the entire industry. And my last question is, um, where have you seen success effectively dealing with regulations? Yes, going back to, that's another good question, thank you. So uh, going back to our original statement, I, I really believe that most OSHA requirements, occupational safety requirements, are designed to protect our employees. So if we build into our business a core value that says that safety is the most important thing on a job, then we're going to we're going to be compliant. So that means now that we can compete for contracts uh where safety is a, is a critical issue. So we've seen we've had several several success stories in our in our business for our clients where they have great in the construction industry where they have great EMR ratings and so they're automatically considered for opportunities because because the customer, whoever it might be, whether it's utility or the government, uh, really has safety as its primary concern. That's probably number one. Number two, I think the best success story is when you have safety, for example, as your primary core value on a job, and your workers' compensation ratings start going down and down and down, and you're paying less and less and less even though everybody else is paying more. So that's both good for business and good for your customer and, and obviously for your employees. And it's really good for you because your employees stay safe. So you're not having to pay uh, downtime or workers 
compensation claims, but you're also able to uh, provide them with full employment opportunities, and they make a lot more money when they're working as opposed to when they're not working. So everybody wins. The customer wins, you win, and your employees win. And I think those are probably the two greatest success, success stories across the board. I could probably give you some specifics if we had enough time, but I want to make sure we're, we're um, pretty timely here. Uh, thank you, William, for sharing today. And um, <clears throat> we can always do another follow-up interview to go into these the specifics. Sure, I'd, I'd love to do that, Dustin. Whenever you're, whenever you'd like. I, I enjoy talking about small business. I enjoy talking about the benefits uh, to small business and the opportunities that are out there in the, both the public sector and the private sector. So I, I would thoroughly enjoy that.